the biggest expectations my parents had for me were to be a good person uh, and to get married. <laughs> my name is Smriti Mundra. I am Indian American and uh, I'm a film director. I was raised by a filmmaker. My father was a director, um, so I was raised with, you know, a lot of love of art and cinema and storytelling. But just, you know, somehow it never registered to me that this was a path that, you know, an Indian woman could take and do so well. I think there might have been like some kind of meet and greet with Mira Nair. I just remember being completely stunned, you know, and she was like beautiful and just very poised and just nothing like what I was raised to think a filmmaker looks like. My dad was radical in my mind in terms of a filmmaker because he's a brown man, you know. I'd always only seen white men in that role. And to see an Indian woman, you know, from my background, uh, make a film, you know, that was so profound, so beautiful. It stuck with me somewhere, you know. Filmmaking was what I always wanted to do, but, you know, only when I made A Suitable Girl did I remember that moment and I remembered that as a South Asian woman, as a woman period, I have also a story that's worth putting out in the world. It took a long time for me to really let light bulb to go off in my head and say actually you know what I have to say is also valuable and worth making a film about. My father's name was uh, Jag Mundra, Jagmohan Mundra. Um, and there was a time in his career, I remember, you know, very earlier in his career, I was maybe 10 or 11 years old, where he decided he was going to change his name to Jack Monroe because he couldn't get anyone to read his scripts. He couldn't get anyone to return his calls. Um, and he, you know, very earnestly said, I'm going to change my name and that's going to be my screen name. And he did it for uh, a year, year and a half before ditching it because it just didn't feel right and I think he felt like he was betraying, you know, some part of himself. I think about it a lot now, you know, and I think about how far we've come that, you know, from the time where he couldn't get his calls returned as a brown man from India, from Calcutta, to now, here I am, you know, a week away from the Academy Awards. It's like, it's a lot has happened in a generation. You know, my dad was a pioneer and he was someone that they saw as an example of someone who could do it and oh it's possible ultimately i mean it wasn't easy for him to get in the door but when he has foot in the door he never looked back you know he made 40 films he's working on his 40th film when he died his visibility gave uh hope to a lot of people and us being so visible now is so much more than us getting recognition for our work or for a film that we made it's really about you know black and brown people all over this country all over the world having that moment you know we don't have to conceal or whitewash who we are you know we can be ourselves and tell our story bruce is an activist and battle rapper who was elected to the house of representatives in missouri won an improbable race um, against a very deeply entrenched political dynasty. I just, you know, started looking more into local politics, just on sort of an aimless scavenger hunt, you know, trying to find meaning, and came across this profile of Bruce and thought the journey up to that point was incredible, the person was incredible, but also that there was more to the story. So I read the article and I, you know, did what any good documentary filmmaker does, which is start reaching out by any means necessary. So I started calling his office, emailing his office, tweeting at him, sending, you know, DMs, anything I could possibly do to get his attention and got no response. I saw every email <laughs> and message, but I wasn't a big fan of, of media, especially due to Ferguson and the death of Michael Brown and how many people, you know, came in and tried to exploit what happened and what the protesters and activists went through. I remember my assistant saying, hey, you're doing this. And so when we met for the first time, we weren't supposed to shoot, we weren't supposed to do anything, just talk. I immediately felt comfortable because the energy of what she was saying, um, especially about telling my story and me being able to just let the story manifest rather than people come in and create this narrative and create this story the way they want it. And so it was an instant connection. Our story is important. And so the best way to tell that story was by centering it around the folks who are, are from that community. We approached the film as us just staying with Bruce and following the motions of his life 
and his journey and us figuring out the story together. We had no idea what the story was gonna be for weeks when we started filming it. Every time we thought we knew, it would evolve into something else. And our jobs as filmmakers was to be there with the cameras and help process what he was trying to tell us into a film. All filmmakers, any storyteller, you don't have to know everything. Your job is to step back, listen, learn, absorb, and then let your experiences shape your perspective. I would say my eyes and maybe my smile because I've been told it's inviting. It just means joyously celebrating who we are in our own skin, us being ourselves and, and feeling beautiful for it. My name is Smriti Mundra and I love Tinted.